It's the penultimate day, and we're looking at Glen Alaki. Glen Alaki is based in Charlestown of Arbalore, which obviously is where Arbalore are based but also is famous for having the Walker's Shortbread Factory. Now, this is the youngest distillery in the series, having only been founded in 1967. It was founded by uh, McPherson in that year. Um, in 1985, it was sold on to Invergordon Distilleries. Um, they bought it, but ceased distilling. In 1989, Campbell Distilleries purchased Glen Allerkey and then restarted distilling. Now, I believe Campbell Distilleries became part of Shivas Brothers, uh, but in 2017, uh, the distillery was sold to a new independent company, the Glen Alaki Distillers Company. Um, and I believe um, one of the people was the, that set up that company was the managing director of um, Ben Riak, and he moved across to create this company. So prior to 2017, uh, the whiskies produced here were used in blends. However, since the buyout in 2017, the new owners have moved to producing their own age statement whiskies. Now, the age statements start from eight years and go up to 30. They also do a range of single casks or specific cask finished whiskies. The 15 year that I have here is 46% ABV. It's non-chill filtered, no colors added at all to it. But from what I can gather, the whiskey is matured in a mix of ex-Spanish white wine and sherry casks. Um, that will be interesting to see what happens because white wine is quite dry um, and sherry as well. So it'll be interesting to see how it impacts that. Let's get this open. Um, a bottle of this would set you back, not a small bottle obviously, full size bottle, set you back 55 to 66 pounds. Um, so you can see the, the increases that are going up. And this is a 15 year. So the previous 15 year that we have to compare to it um, would be the Glenfiddich. And you can see that you could be looking at paying um, up to, well, 25 pounds more for this bottle um, than the Glenfiddich. But what does it have to offer? Well, first up, um, I mentioned obviously no coloring on this one for a reason. To me, I believe this is the darkest colored one that we've got so far. There is a deep, deep golden ruby color to this. Um, it's definitely darker than all the rest. Now on the flavor, Ooh, we're going sweet on this one. Yeah, there's immediately honey straight there. Cinnamon. As long as it's not in the flavor. <laughs> yeah, honey and cinnamon and there's something else there, but I'm just not able to pick out what it is. All right, um, let's, let's go in for the taste and uh, see what we're getting off it. Okay, immediately, there's a lot of spices on there. Um, it's probably not as spicy as, what was the spiciest one I've had so far? Probably yesterday, yesterday's was the spiciest um, when the water was added. Um, there's caramel in the aftertaste. Um, spice and caramel. Uh, let, let's have another sip and try and get some more of those flavors. Um, hmm. It's strange. Um, I'm not getting too much off it. I'm getting obviously caramel, getting spice, getting, I think maybe, yeah, it's, it's like there's a sweetness there and I'm trying to work out what the sweetness is. It's the same in the taste. I mean, on the nose. There's something there. Like. 
chocolatey. Does it smell like, it smells chocolatey a bit. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's what it is. So caramel, chocolate, it's sweet, a bit of spice. Hmm. It feels very wintry, Christmassy, um, with the whole idea of chocolate and spices and caramel. Um, I, again, because this has been aged in um, sherry and white wine barrels, um, I've got a feeling that either a drop of water would uh, change the flavour profile, or even um, if you were to, again, leave it, uh, once you've opened the bottle, leave it for well a month and then come back to it, you would find that the flavour has once again changed once it's mixed with the air. Uh, but yeah, that has been the Glen Alaki 15. I shall see you tomorrow for the final 12th day in this series. Take care.